Hello students, today we are discussing demand analysis. It's the third lesson in microeconomics for second few come students. Demand analysis. Before we analyze the demand, we should know what is demand first. So let us see the meaning of demand. Meaning of demand. The quantity of goods that a consumer purchases in a market at a particular time price at a particular time. So what we want to purchase may not be demand unless it has three things. So to be called one desire as a demand, three conditions should uh, apply. One, desire to buy. Second one, ability to pay. Third one, willingness to play. So, desire to buy means you are going to purchase the good. You should have a desire first. Then, ability to pay. You should have some money to pay them. Then, willingness to pay. So, you should be willing to buy that particular good at a particular price in a particular time. So, these three conditions should fulfill. Then, we call it as a demand. So, merely demand means merely desire can't be called as demand unless these three conditions are fulfilled. So one is desire to buy, second one is ability to pay and third one is willingness to pay. So these three if conditions are fulfilled then you call desire as a demand. So once again we recall the meaning of demand that is quantity of good that a consumer purchases in a per market at a particular time, particular price, see here, particular price at a particular time. So this is what you call demand. So what is demand function? Demand function means the functional relationship between the factors and demand. Factors which determine the demand. So which are the factors that determine the demand? See, if you are asked to write the functions of demand, you have to write like this, individual demand function. Individual means per particular person. Demand function. QD. QD means quantity demanded is equal to is the function of PX, PY, Y, T, E. These are the various factors which influence the quantity demand. So that what is PX? So PX means price of that good price of that particular good. Second one, PY means price of other good. Any other good. Why? Why means income. Income of consumer. Income of consumer play an important role. Then T. T means taste and preferences. Then E means expectations. So these are all various factors which decide the demand of a particular good. So what is price of X, price of one particular good, price of related goods, P should be called as PR, price of related goods, Y means income, T means taste and preferences, E means expectation. So let us see PX. PX means price of X good, any one good. If price increases, it influences the demand. If price decreases, it influences the demand. Price of related good. Related good means uh, like uh, substitute good. Take an example of substitute good. Substitute good means if you one was to give a line, you was to know what was good. Other than now, related good. For example, coffee or tea. So, you know, related goods. Substitute goods. So, otherly bear with this article. For example, there is no change in uh, tea price, but there is a hike in coffee price, then it affects the demand of coffee. That's why price of related good also influences the demand of particular thing. Then why means income. If income increases, then demand increases. If income decreases, demand decreases. Then taste and preference. Whatever the price. So if you like that, you will be going to purchase that. So taste play an important role. Then E, E means expectations. Expectations means if you expect in future 
prices come down, then it affects the demand. Or if you think vice versa, like prices come, it, uh, increases in future, then demand affects. So these are all various factors that affect the demand. That's why we call it as the factors that affect the demand. So while writing the demand function, you have to consider all these factors. Quantity demand is the function of Px, Pr, it should be R, then Y, T, E. So these are all the factors which affect the demand of a particular good. So this is demand function, particularly individual demand function. There are two demand functions, one individual demand function and market demand function. So this is individual uh, demand function. Let us see how to find the demand in different prices. So, price, here, see here the schedule, the price 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, these are all the prices. So, demand increases 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4. So, how to find the demand? So, in the examination question that we asked in the examination, how to find the different quantity of demand at different prices. So, they give price and they also give demand function. See here, QD is equal to 20 minus 2P is the demand function. They will be given demand function and price. Then you have to put the price in the place of P. Then you are going to get the demand. See for example, when P is 4, when P is 4, so take the uh, uh, function of demand, 20 minus 2. In the place of P, we have put 4 here as the 4 has been given. So 2 into 4, 8. So 20 minus 8 is equal to 12. So 12 will be the demand, quantity demand and then price 4 rupees per piece. So that's why it is 12. If price increases by 1 rupee, it becomes 5 rupees instead of 4. Then what happens? See, QD is equal to 20 minus 2P. So this function has to be taken. So in the place of P, you have to put 5, then 5 twos are 10, 20 minus 10 is equal to 10. So 10 will be the demand. In the same way, you have to put various prices in the place of P and you are going to get the quantity demanded. So like this, we will be finding the quantity demanded in a various price level. In the different price level, different quantity demanded, we can find with the help of demand function. So they will be giving you demand function they will be giving you the price, different prices. Then you have to find the quantity demanded in the different prices. So you have to follow this formula in the examination. So this is how we need to find the quantity demanded in a various price level. Law of demand. The next concept is law of demand. What is law of demand? It's very simple. Let's see. Other things remaining constant. Other things means you know, in the demand function, we have uh, known demand is the function of Px, Pr, Y, T, E. So, so many functions are there, which so many factors are there, which affect the demand, among which any one other thing remain constant. When the price of a good decreases, if the price of the good decreases, the demand for it increases and vice versa. Vice versa means ulta. If price decreases, if price increases, demand decreases. If uh, price decreases, demand increases. So, this is inverse relationship between price and demand. If other things remaining constant, other things means which are the other things? Taste, preference, income, expectations, price of other good, See, these are all various other, other factors. If other factors, if other things remain constant, if there is no change in those factors, then when the price of a good decreases, if the price decreases, then demand increases and vice versa. Vice versa means, adhike ulta. price karme adre, demand jaste agatte and dikhi, unvele price jaste adre, demand karme agatte. If the other things remain constant, where you so next note. Demand schedule. So you may be asked to write the demand schedule in the examination. There may be a simple question. Write a demand schedule. Individual demand schedule. 
So you have read table, schedule means table. So price of a tomato per kg, 87654. So price is decreasing. See here demand for tomato, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Demand is increasing. So this is what demand, individual demand schedule. If price decreases, demand increases. So demand schedule means the table which shows the relationship between the price and the demand for the good. So that is what it called demand schedule. This is individual demand schedule. Individual demand schedule means a consumer's schedule. If price decreases, demand increases. This is what you call price schedule. Sorry, demand schedule. Demand curve. So what is demand curve? If demand schedule is represented with a diagram, then we call it as a demand curve. So how will be the demand curve? Demand D, D. See here, this curve is called as demand curve. So in the o, Y axis, we put it as, put the, this the O, Y curve to measure the price, change in price. O, X curve, we measure quantity demanded, quantity demanded. So O, Y, we measure the price, we put the price, OX quantity demanded. See here, if price increases from 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, then quantity decreases. When the price is 4 per piece, then quantity demanded was 12. See here. So, when price is 4, demand quantity demand is 12. Now, price increases to 5, then demand decreases to 10. In the same way, if 6, then 8, if it jumps to 7, it becomes 6, if it more increases than 8, then demand quantity demand becomes very low, 4. So the relationship between price and quantity demanded, if schedule shows that it is called as demand schedule, if the demand schedule, put it in our diagram, it is called as demand curve. So this is DD demand, DD curve with the demand curve. Always demand curve from right left to right, downward sloping, having downward slope, always. Why? Because there is an inverse relationship between price and demand. So next, <coughs> movement along demand curve. Movement along demand curve. What is movement along demand curve? See, if price changes, Quantity demanded also changes. That is what you call movement along demand curve. See, the original price is OP. Original quantity demanded is OQ. If price increases to OP2, then quantity demanded decreases to OQ2. So, in the same demand curve, quantity demanded that move along with the same demand curve. That is what you call movement along the demand curve. So here, the price is only the factor we consider. Price increases, quantity demanded decreases. In the same way, price decreases to P1. Earlier, price was OP. Now, it has become OP1. So, price decreases this much. So now, quantity increases to OQ2, OQ1. So, this much quantity increased. So this is what the movement along demand curve. So here, movement along demand curve, only the factor we consider that is price. Other factors constant. Next, shifting demand curve. See here, there is no change in price. We keep the price unchanged. Price will change actively, but other factors are changing. Bare factor will change at the end. Bare factor, so for example, income, price of related good, taste and preferences, expectations. So if any change has taken place other than price, then we call it as shifting demand curve because price will be constant. See here, OP is the price. There is no other price here. So there is no change in price. But other factors are changing other than price. So many factors are there, for example, expectation, 
or taste preference or income. So many factors are there. If there is any change in those factors, then demand increases or decreases. So then demand curve shift from rightward and leftward. If demand curve shift to rightward, it means demand has increased. See quantity increases. If demand curve shift to leftward, the quantity demanded becomes less. When quantity demanded becomes more, if income increases, in the relate, if the related goods price increases, if expectations are there in future, the price will be rising. Then in the same price level, this particular good will be demanded more. So consumers are going to purchase it more. Vice versa, if income decreases, if the people expect in future price decreases, then quantity demanded curve shift to leftward. That means quantity purchase will be less. So this is what the shift in demand curve. Demand curve shift other than price level, other than price. So then we call it as shift in demand curve. If if we consider only price, then movement along the demand curve. If demand changes, quantity demanded changes, just because of price, it is called as movement along the demand curve. If the demand, quantity demanded, variations take place, then it is called as, if when the price is uh, constant, it is called as shift in demand curve. So this is what we call the shift in demand curve. So next we shall understand market demand. So in the previous slide we had seen what is the determinants of demand for the individual person. Now we are going to understand the demand function in the case of market demand. In the case of market demand. There is a change. There is a difference between individual demand and the market demand. What is market demand? Market demand is nothing but summation of all individual demand. Is market demand. So in market demand, what are the factors going to influence the market demand? See here, quantity demand is the function of Px, price of particular good, Pr, price of related good, Y, that is income, T, is taste and preferences, E expectations. So till P X to E, these are the factors we had understood in individual demand while we were understanding individual demand. Now in market demand, two more factors will be there. One is P and D. You know what is P X? What is P X? Correct. That is price of particular good. What is P R? Exactly. What you have said is right. P R means price of Related group. Y means what? Income. T means what? Taste and preference. E means what? The expectations. Then what about P? Then P means what? P means population. Population increases. What about demand? Sure. Uh, exactly. Demand increases. Then what about D? Distribution of income. If income distribute in favor of poor people or in favor of rich people. See here in distribution of demand there are two kinds of possibilities. Distribution of demand in favor of poor people or distribution of demand in favor of rich people. If income distribute in favor of poor people, what about demand? Demand increases. If income is distributed in favor of poor people, demand increases. If distribution of income is distributed in favor of rich people, then demand increases. So, this is what various factors which determine the market demand. So, let's see. Already we have understood two types of demand function. What is individual demand function? and market demand function. So if you are asked to write the market demand function 
then you have to sum some of two individual demand schedules. See here, A demand schedule, this is A demand schedule, this is B's demand schedule, this is market schedule. See, when price is 4, A person, A consumer purchases 12 pieces, but B purchases 16 because individual purchase different quantity in different price level. So when price is 4, A purchases 12 pieces, B purchases 16. In the same way, it jumps to 5, 6, 7, 8, then 10, 8, 6, 4. These are all the various quantity demanded by A. In the same way, B purchases 16, 14, 12, 10, 8. So if you sum, you sum up both the demand, it becomes market demand. See here, 12 plus 16, 28. 10 plus 12, 14, 24. 8 plus 12, 20. 6 plus 10, 16. 4 plus 8, 12. So, market demand schedule is the summation of these two, A and B. So, market schedule is simple thing that is summation of individual demand schedule. In the same way, individual demand curve and market demand curve also. So, it becomes like this. So, let us see the next class. Elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand is the another concept. What is elasticity? You know the quality of elastic. Elastic means it expands, it contracts. If you drag with a force, it expands. If you give a, some symptom of a relaxation, it becomes contract. So that's what we call elasticity. Elasticity of demand means what? So we have to define elasticity of demand like this. Responsiveness. Responsiveness of demand to a change in one of the determinants while other determinants remain constant. This is what we call elasticity of demand. So you are asked to write the meaning of elasticity of demand for one mark. What is elasticity of demand? Then you have to write it's a responsiveness. Responsiveness means how quantity demanded respond to what? The change in one of the determinants, so many determinants are there, for example, income and price. So these are the determinants if they change. What is the responsiveness of quantity demanded? Why other determinants remain constant? So many determinants are there which decide the quantity demanded. So if we keep other factors unchanged, other factors are remain constant. Then if any change taken place in income or price or related good price, so how will be the how the demand for a good is affected? That's what we are going to know in the elasticity of demand. So this is what you call responsiveness of demand to a change in one of the determinants while other determinants remain constant. So let us see. Formula to find elasticity of demand. So how to find the elasticity of demand? Elasticity of demand can be understood or it can be calculated with two formulas. One, the easiest one. See, price elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in demand for the good divided by percentage change in the price of the good. See, let us see once again. The price elasticity of demand is equal to Percentage change in demand for the good divided by percentage change in the price of the good. This is what we call elasticity of demand. Next, if we simplify, if we use another one formula, PED, PED represents price elasticity of demand is equal to delta Q by delta P into P by Q. So what is this delta Q? Delta Q means change in price. Delta Q means change in price. See here. Delta P, change in quantity demanded due to change in price. Delta P means change in price. Delta Q means change in quantity demanded. Delta Q means change in quantity demanded. Delta P means change in price. P means initial price. P means initial price. 
Q means initial quantity demanded. So P initial price, Q initial quantity demanded, delta Q now what quantity of demanded now we are having delta P means how much price change now, how much price increase or decrease. So these are the things we need to take. So if you consider this one, this many uh, data, then we go for this one. P price elasticity demand is equal to delta Q by delta P into P by Q. If we use this formula, we can get the elasticity of demand. What percentage of elasticity? Then let us see the elasticity of demand. Various types of elasticity of demand are there. Various types. One, elasticity if perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic means, see there is no, if the price some, something, if uh, variations take place, if price increases, then the demand may be zero. If price decreases, demand may be inf infinity. We can't say the increase of quantity demanded if price decreases. And sometimes it may come to zero if price just simply increases. So this is what we call perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic means price elasticity demand will be equal to infinity. Infinity means we can't expect anything may happen. It may come to zero or it may come to countless quantity demanded. So the, in such case, demand curve, see the demand curve nature, demand curve nature will be this parallel to OX axis, parallel to OX axis. In such case, elasticity will be perfectly elastic. Next, perfectly inelastic demand. Perfectly inelastic means whatever the price, the demand will be same. If price becomes more, quantity demand will be same. If price decreases, then quantity demand will also be same. So these are all necessary goods. For example, salt, matchbox. So these are all the various things. Whatever the price we have to purchase. Even if the price comes down, then you have to purchase that much only. For example, salt tabali kuk tabali. You have to pay for So, such kind of goods are called as inelastic, perfectly inelastic. And then, the demand will not be affected by change in price. Price is the effect of the quantity demand. Perfectly inelastic. Perfectly inelastic. Elasticity Elasticity will be zero. See here, price elasticity demand is equal to zero. Next, relatively elastic. Relatively elastic means what? Relatively more elastic. See here in the diagram. See the change in price. See the change in quantity demanded. So, light increasing, light increasing price resulted in decrease of quantity demanded more. See, or if you decrease the price slightly, demand will be more. So, that is what we call relatively elastic. So, price elasticity of demand will be more than one in such case. Now, sulpa price only karmya maru. Demand again, the error of the other is the other. See the gap. This is P1, P. This is Q1, Q. So earlier, price was OP. Then quantity was OQ. Now price decreases to P1 here. Then the quantity increases from Q, OQ to OQ1. So see the difference. The difference is more than this difference. So that means less decrease in price resulted in more quantity demanded. So people will be purchasing it in more quantity if little change in price. So that is what you call relatively elastic. Next one. Relatively inelastic. 
even the price decreases, more price decreases, then quantity demand slightly increased, slightly increased. See here, the price has come down from P to P1, P to P1. Now, quantity increases from OQ to OQ1, OQ2, OQ1. See the difference here, the price has decreased a lot, but the quantity demand increases in a very lightly, very small quantity. This is what you call relatively inelastic, relatively inelastic. This is unitary or equal, equal elastic demand. Unitary means price elasticity demand will be equal to 1. That means how much change in price, that much change taken place in quantity demanded. That is what you call price elasticity of demand will be 1. If you change 50% price, 50% change in quantity demand. That's what we call price elasticity demand will be 1. So there is no difference in this gap and this gap. So the same quantity or uh, change in price, same quantity change in quantity demanded. That's what we call price elasticity demand will be equal to 1. So let us see next one. Factors determining price elasticity of demand. Which are the factors are going to influence the elasticity of demand? This is most important. It will be asked for, asked for five mark in examination. So, which are the factors determining price elasticity of demand? One is nature of good. Nature of good. If it is necessary, there is no effect of change in price. If it is luxury good, if small change is taken place, a lot of change in demand. So, that is what you call nature of good. Whether it is <coughs> necessity good or good. Necessity good, if, there is, if it is necessity good, there is no elasticity of demand. Tumba necessity good, that is elasticity of demand. For example, you can change So, you can change the price of price. That is the demand of the demand. So, nature of good is very important in deciding the elasticity of demand. Next one, availability of substitute. Availability of substitute. Availability of substitute means if there is any good which can be used instead of this particular good. For example, that's what I said, the coffee and tea. Coffee and tea substitute good. Coffee ke badlagi tea kudi bodo, tea ke badlagi coffee kudi bodo. So here, availability of substitute. Availability idre price elasticity demand jasti rathe. Illa antandre elasticity ila de na. For example, ika tea illa anti chupoli. Bari coffee wale kudi bhe. Aga anivariya na. Adan ne tawabe bhe. Adan bit bare ka bhe kaga de na. Ekendra dikhe substitute budi bhe na. Vandre idre elasticity jasti rathe. Illa antandre elasticity kar me rathe. So income of the consumer. Income of the consumer. If consumer income increases, then elasticity that increases. So, or the price of good, price of good increases, decreases, that affects the real income of a consumer. So, that's why the elasticity will be affected by income of a consumer. Then habits. If you make a habit of a particular thing, whatever the price, you can't change it. For example, reading newspaper in the morning, so elasticity will not be there or very less. So that is what I call habit. It becomes habit. Then price of goods. Price of goods. Price of goods in the price just the elasticity just the price. Uh, price has still change in the elasticity. Variety of uses. If you use one particular good for many purposes, then elasticity will be more. For example, electricity, you say you take an electricity, electricity used for many purposes. For example, a cooking purpose, then water heating, fan, AC, for so many things. So if more uses, if variety of uses becomes more, elasticity will be more. If uses less, variety of uses less, elasticity will also be less. Then, deferred consumption. Deferred means postponement. 
If your desire is can be postponed, then elasticity will be more. If desire can't be deferred, it can't be postponed, then consumption, then uh, if we can't defer the consumption, then elasticity will be less. New, new uh, consumption na mundur bodo antre. Deferred means postponed mode. Deferred mode antre. Postponed mode antre. Aga elasticity just there. Postponed mode kaga dey lang antre. Whatever the price, elasticity will not be there. So it is less than or almost zero elasticity. So it is what you call deferred consumption. Then market awareness. If market awareness is there, then elasticity will be more. If it affects the elasticity, market awareness is not elasticity is not So these are all the various eight factors which determine the price elasticity of demand. So once again, factors determining price elasticity of demand are one nature of good, whether it is necessary or luxury. Availability of substitute means any other goods are there to use instead of that particular good that is what we call substitute income of the consumer so how will be the income of the consumer real income during because of uh, due to change in price of a good so that they, that in, uh, impacts a lot then habits if you make a habit of one thing whatever the price you need to pay it and then price of goods, various goods, if price of various goods changes, then it affects the elasticity of demand. Then deferred consumption, if we postpone the consumption, then elasticity will be more. If we can't postpone, elasticity will be less. Then market awareness, if the market awareness is there, then elasticity will be more. If market awareness less, then elasticity also be less. So these are all various factors that determine the market elasticity. So let us recall all the points again from the back. Previous slide we have seen price elasticity of demand will be 1. That means the change in price will be equal to change in quantity demanded. That is what we call unitary. Unitary means 1. That means equal to equal elastic demand. Previous one, relatively inelastic is lot of change in price but small change in quantity demand that is what you call price elasticity is lesser than one then price elasticity is more than one that means relatively elastic means little bit change in price lot of change in quantity demanded then there is no change in quantity demanded that is perfectly inelastic whatever the price change take place in OY axis there is no change in quantity demanded. The quantity demanded will be same. Then perfectly elastic means whatever the price changes, there is a lot of difference take place. We can't predict it. This is what we call various types of elasticity. Elasticity to find the elasticity of demand, what formula we are going to use? We are going to use the formula percentage change in demanded, then percentage change in price of the good or we can also use the formula price elasticity of demand is equal to delta Q by delta P P by Q you know what is delta P or delta Q delta Q means quantity change in quantity demanded delta P means change, change in price P and Q that represents original price and original quantity so elasticity means Elasticity is responsiveness of demand because of the change in the factor when other factors constant. Market schedule and individual schedule. You know the difference between market schedule and the individual schedule. Market schedule is the summation of two individual or more than two individual schedule. So market demand function, market demand function, market demand will be determined by various factors Px, Pr, Y, T, E, P, D Px means price of particular good Pr means price of related good Y means income of a consumer T means taste and preference E means expectation P means population D 
Three means distribution of income. So these are all various factors which determine the market demand. So shift in demand go shift take place because of what? Because of change of other factors when price will be constant. There is no change in price, but demand increases or decreases due to the change in other factors other than price. So movement along the demand curve here in this case price is only the factor to change the quantity demanded when price increases quantity decreases when price decreases quantity increases so this is what you call movement along the demand curve this is demand curve demand curve always from uh, it is downward from left to right because of inverse relationship between price and demand quantity demand if a table shows the relationship between quantity demanded and price that is what we call demand schedule demand schedule means the table which shows the relationship between price and quantity demanded law of demand means when other things remain constant the price change price increases or decreases then the demand increases price decreases demand increases that as we have seen this one see here price decreasing and here demand increasing so the relationship between these two price and quantity demanded in demand what is the relationship it is inverse relationship so inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded lead to the demand schedule left to right downward so law of demand we have seen that means inverse relationship between price and demand so it is individual demand function individual demand function having these factors px pr y p e px means price of that particular good pr means price of related good y means income t means taste and preference e means expectations so these are all the factors will be there in the individual demand function so meaning of demand means <coughs> quantity demanded by a consumer at a particular time, particular price. So it should fulfill these three conditions. One, desire to buy. Next one, ability to pay and willing to pay. If these three are fulfilled, then we call desire as a demand. So this is about demand analysis. In this chapter, we have seen or we have understood the meaning of demand, law of demand, demand schedule, demand curve, then shifting demand curve, demand moving along the demand curve, elasticity of demand, the meaning of elasticity and factors which influence the demand and how to find the elasticity of demand and what are the kinds of elasticity of demand. And finally, we have also understood the factors which determine the elasticity of demand. So that's all about demand analysis. Thank you.